Hello. Hello, Broccoli. Hey, Tracy. How's it going? Good. It's it's actually 9.10 for us because we're both on the East Coast. Hanging out. Hey, uh, hey, Broccoli. Yeah. What are you eating? Ice cream. Oh, so good. <laughs> what kind of ice cream? Uh, Blizzard from Dairy Queen. Nothing fancy, just a good old classic. Oh, man. I, I imagined you, like, having a big, like, gallon thing with a spoon. I'm not sure how I should feel about that. Wait, why? Sitting there with a gallon of ice cream, I can't eat the whole thing. Dude, like, <laughs> let me tell you. I've gone to buy red ice cream and had the salted caramel, and it's been a thing. Which is probably why I gained so much weight while I was, uh, yeah. But anyways, I'm not eating anything because I'm saving all my calories for adventures later on today. Or later on, t like, tomorrow, actually. Basically, wine. Wine and whiskey is, is my thing right now. Do you like whiskey? At times. I have to be in the mood for whiskey. Yeah. Do you know what I'm in the mood for right now? What's that? Guess. Guess. Um, you're in the mood for some CLI. Oh, my God. You know me so well. It's amazing. How'd you know? <laughs> well, if you're out of whiskey and you're out of wine, <laughs> you got to go back to Korea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyways, so, Broccoli, everybody knows that you do that uh, Angular CLI thing, and... I've been playing with Angular CLI and I know you have all these like little tips and tricks and excitement. So I want to start with like just basic stuff of what you can do with Angular CLI. But I want to do like NGNU first. I'm going to actually create the site YOLO BROLO because I've been wanting to do it forever and I've decided it's going to be an Angular app. So NGNU is one thing. Um, what does NGNU do for us? Uh, NGNU will do a few things for you, uh, especially without passing any arguments in. So by default, you see that it's creating a folder structure for you. Uh -huh. uh, it's great. It'll create a folder for you, the YOLO BROLO folder. <laughs> it'll house your application for you. And that's going to be a fun to say all night long. Uh, YOLO, YOLO BROLO. Bro. <laughs> uh, but it's creating that folder for you, as well as a whole lot of files you see listed there. Uh, but it's basically a scaffold of a uh, boilerplate Angular 2 application. Mm -hmm. Including uh, builds from and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm sure we'll get into as we go through uh, creating this wonderful site. Oh my god! So, like, what else does? Wait, why? Why am I waiting for npm? This is traumatizing. Like, I feel like I accidentally mm -hmm. wandered into. No, you're good. You're good. Dude, look so at look how fast. It's... You have a your fourth file up in that list is package about JSON, which tells the. Uh, it tells NPM which packages it needs to install. So it's going out to NPM and downloading all those packages for you right now. And you guys don't have a bower.json, huh? Like Ember. No. Ember has a bower.json. No, yeah, there's no dependencies on Bower. So um, tell me about this whole, you know, everybody's all excited about it, the, uh, the Webpack thing. Like right now, if I'm using a specific version of Ember CLI, am I going to be using the Webpack version or what? Uh, correction, Angular CLI. Uh, oh my god, did I say Ember CLI? You did, I won't hold it against you. Oh my gosh. Um, so what the Webpack version will do is actually it's a different set of files. So in that list you see an Angular dash CLI dash build mm -hmm. That file's not there uh, mm -hmm. in the Webpack version. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a few other files that aren't there and aren't necessary. There's a system config file. Um, the media source director. Right, uh, right, that's right. no longer needed, and the media is not needed. Uh, because the logic for the build process is all encapsulated in the CLI, not in the generator process. That's actually kind of makes me happy because using Ember CLI, I never had to worry about these files. And now, now, like I was pairing with Deborah earlier today, and she's like, Yeah, where's your system config file? I'm like, Oh, it's right here. I know that because I've used it. But it would be nice not to have those exist in my life. That'd be kind of cool. Exactly. And the, the knowledge base for people who understand uh, well, Webpack uh, is much greater than the people who understand systems. Uh, yeah, community and broccoli. Uh, community adoption and what have you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. So, like, I'm using 1.0.0 beta 8. 
Am I? Uh, beta 10 is out. Oh, God. And earlier today, actually, uh, if you virtually saw any or Angular-CLI at Webpack, you can actually download and install the Webpack. Okay, should we do the Webpack version? Sure. All right, so how do I upgrade this thing? Uh, let's dash, dash, if upgrade. If you haven't done anything with it, let's just, um, I don't see one upgrade. I think you just want to uh, uninstall the global version of the Angular CLI first. NG uninstall. Uh, and then you want Angular dash CLI, and then the dash C. Dash what? Dash, dash save? Uh, G. Oh. Uh, so what you're doing is you're uninstalling the global version. Oh, okay. I'm doing... Oh. Why? NG uninstall Angular CLI dash G. Why is it not working? Oh, NCM uninstall. Oh. Not NG. <laughs> I'm just uninstalling the entire thing, huh? Yep. Oh, yay! So, what does, um, what is this E2E thing? Is that end-to-end -end tests? Yeah, so, uh, okay. Andrew has a hyper Oh, we don't have that in Ember. So then okay, I do... <laughs> Angular CLI what slash webpack? Nope, at webpack. Angular CLI at webpack? Yep, and then we got you. Oh my god, this is so exciting. Can I take a picture? But am I going to have like the newest, newest, new, new, new? Of course. New, new versions yeah, of these things. seven hours old. <laughs> it's a baby! <laughs> All right. How old is your oldest kid? Youngest kid? Youngest kid. Oh, yeah. You don't have baby, baby, babies anymore. No, I no more diapers. Oh, you're kind of disappointed, right? <laughs> so when you guys were switching from Ember to Angular and like adding things and different things like that, like what would you say are sort of like the biggest differences that you saw? Um, really don't want any uh, um, yeah, Ember feel like did all the heavy lifting in terms of getting things in place, parsing commands, generating different blueprints, uh, which is the idea of taking a blueprint, essentially, um, which is a frame that has other things plugged into it to be able to tell the CLI how to spit out different files, whether it be a package.json or a TypeScript file, a JavaScript file, a HTML file, uh, to be able to inject different values in that. Same thing you do with an, or similar to what you would do with an Angular uh, template file. You so, curly braces to say, hey, I want this that variable to go here. Same thing, except instead of spitting out HTML for the browser to render, we're spitting out code files for your application to use. So I could even, like, if I, you know, not that I recommend this to anybody but like if I really wanted some sort of like custom setup and I didn't like the the general like ng what ng new spits out for me I could actually go and like create my own blueprints and then like ng my new or something like that and then all of a sudden I get my own excitement is that sort of how that works potentially um being that the angular CLI is an add-on to the Ember CLI. Mm -hmm. The discovery of those add-ons may not work. It's something I haven't not played with. But what about with blueprints? Like, if you just generate your own blueprints, like, does that work? Yeah, but it, it books in a, specific, a particular location for those blueprints. 
So if you went out and replaced the ones that were there, then yes, that would work. Um, but we're still curating how we're going to interact with add-ons. Yeah. Um, so that you could essentially overwrite or add additional files, take additional files off it, or out and interact with the blueprints that are there. I thought I think I thought it was interesting actually um, listening to Manfred um, the other day talk about uh, t talk about um, well he doesn't use Angular CLI right he just uses his like his own Webpack thing and then uh, what I didn't realize is that you can just like you can just like an add on is an add on but. You can also just create an npm package, and it's the same thing, right? But right, but I mean, but when I hear you say that you would like to use your own blueprint, I hear that you would like to be able to engine generate components. Oh yeah, totally, them. totally. Yeah, I'm just uh, saying, like, I'm surprised that, like, when when I think Ember add-ons, I think like magical, and then I'm like, oh, it's just like an npm package, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the yeah. Ember. CLI allows you to specify where the blueprints are coming from. So I think you can actually override that. And you yeah, actually pull it from the GitHub repository too. It's exciting. It's magical. All right, tell me tell me something exciting about Angular CLI as we do this. Like whether it's the webpack or what it can do, or like what do what do you think I should let people know about? Uh, so the one thing um, I know you've played with the Angular CLI before, you've played with Material. Uh huh. Um, oh my God! Is, isn't a fun waiting for uh, NPM to install? Yeah, but no, I'm really excited because you're going to tell me something about Material and and the CLI. Um, material will just be an example here. Oh my God! So the idea of what you the steps you need to go through or previously to go through to be able to pull in Material into your project. Yep. Is you would have to NPM install it. You would have to reference it wherever you need it within your application. You would need to update your Angular CLI build to say, hey, pull these files in, these under files. Then you also need to go into the system configuration and tell the system configuration how to find those files. This is a whole lot of different stuff to do. A lot of people um, are unsure of exactly what those steps mean and what exactly you need to do with this. Like, all right, I'm following these steps, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on. So it's a little bit uh, troublesome as far as to explain. Because then you have to get into, well, how does system work? Why does system work? What is the attention system uh, to be able to pull this thing back? So here, with the Webpack version, if you want with this project, if you want to use material, uh, you just npm install and import it, and you're good to go. That's awesome. So simplification for the end user development experience is one of the huge benefits of uh, using Webpack. Yeah. What else? What other exciting things are happening? Uh, uh, we're improving our documentation right now. Uh, we're working on getting the documentation up to speed of an upgrade process. So, all right, you have your um, and the CLI project is created with the CLI configuration. What changes do you need to make as you upgrade or update your global version to the Webpack version? Oh crap. What files? Oh you crap. Know, what files do you need? Oh god. That's right. I forgot about that. Okay. Now. I oh shit. <laughs> Well, you know what? That's okay because I'll just like npm uninstall. Well, okay. I mean, is it that different? Is it really that different? Uh, there's quite a few things you need to go through and um, Oh, shit. Oh, that's fun. Sounds like a talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much that uh, I think should be put into the top of uh, changing the version for the data to be some software. But I guess that's true. Oh my god. Okay. We need to keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So, um. So, since all of the build tools for the system to have copies and the broccoli built process and by build pipeline, 
are still part of the Ember CLI. We're still pulling all of those in because the Ember CLI is still independent. Oh, interesting. So you're basically using all of them. Not so much. Uh, it's no longer using their buffer buffer services from JS. Not okay. But because you can't control your dependencies, dependencies, uh, those things are all still built. Uh, and um, then we've added on to that the uh, web app. So, Broccoli, I'm kind of scared about upgrading my app now. I know, but, oh god, do I have to npm warn create dependency, none was installed, do I need to install Webpack? That doesn't warn we don't care about warnings. Okay, I don't care about warnings. Alright, got it. So, actually, let me go into my ng tattoo app tattoo wait tattoo dash ng example um should i make a branch out of this like a branch out of a branch you can do that but or i guess that would be kind of silly change. right huh or you could just abandon your oh no i like my changes though all right whatever no, no, no. i mean your additional changes NGS. Oh, why? Yeah, I was. No, I'm not. Okay, so NG Tattoo still works. Okay, so what do I need to do to upgrade my app? Now that you're scaring me. So what that's actually doing is it's using the local uh, version of what that can inside of that because you don't point that to figure that on the end of it in there. Oh, I see. Oh, so I need to basically upgrade my app. Oh, this isn't so bad. Okay, so I just need to go into my package.json and then I just need to, wait, what are you talking about? Oh, Angular C, oh, Angular C, it says it has nothing. Or do I just do ng in it? Oh, that's just, that's just configuration. We find your dependencies in the last time you're seeing a lot. The dev dependencies. On one. Oh, got it. Wait, don't I just do ng in it and then it'll upgrade for me? Um, there will be something, but there's going to be a bunch of things that you need to go through and do that. Okay, wait, so what do I do here? So, I'd rather not go through all this stuff because it's not something everybody can use it to prefer. Oh, really? Okay. Let's go back to the Yolo Brolo. Okay, let's go back to Yolo Brolo. I'm uh, scared. And you can blow away that directory as soon as you want. Uh, blow away which directory? The Yolo Brolo. You are in with the owner. So it's just from Jeff. Oh. Yep. But, you, but that folder is coming through. So you don't want to oh, I'll just uh, delete it. it. I'll just delete it. You can do that from the camera. Can I? How do I do it? Uh, RM. RM dash RF. Uh, dash RF, which is uh, recursive and forced. And then you want to do the to yellow brother. Oh, hey. Magic. Did that work? I can do the new yellow brother. With the new Angular CLI. And you'll notice that you don't want to have it. File coming in here. Right. You no longer have an Angular CLI build .js file. Oh my god, Broccoli. I feel like everything oh, has changed on me. The world. The world has changed. Wait, okay, so sorry. I'm giving a talk um like Thursday. And so if I don't change the dev dependency, I'm still gonna be able to run this app and do it, right? Yeah, don't blow in your notes. You're no model record. How would I blow it away? Delete it. Okay, like just don't. Okay, just like leave that there. It'll be fine. It's just when I upgrade. It's just when I upgrade my app and I want to use like a different version. Then all of a sudden I'm gonna have to do that. But like I don't actually have to worry about. It. It's not like upgrading Angular basically. Absolutely. 
Okay. You know what? And I think I'm less stressed out now. What? This one? Yeah. Dude, I talk to Ben enough. I don't think I need to stare at him every single day. Every day. <laughs> that funky grin going on. I know. He sent me a picture of waving at you, but I can't really, uh, I can't really. Anyways. Internet. I'll send it to you later. Oh my god, we're NPM installing again. Yes, oh shit. So are you done with your ice cream yet? Oh man. Mostly all the candy that uh, wasn't mixed in well. I'm really glad this is going on Yolo Brolo because I feel like most of this is us having conversation and MPM installing and uninstalling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me about Yolo Brolo. What's going on? What are, what are the plans there? Yeah, so Yolo Brolo, there's these um, screencasting things that I've been doing. Uh, Yolo Brolo, right here. <laughs> And they're just really funny and useful things, right? So I have this one. This is, like, all about um, dependency injection. This mm -hmm. is, like, material to splunking, which who knows what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Angular material spelunk and issue submission. Oh, yeah, this is stuff I did with Ben. That's right. I was looking at Angular material, too, and I was trying to find, like, how to contribute to things. Then we submitted an issue, and that was exciting because that was my first issue I ever submitted on GitHub. Nice. This is about contributing to Ember. So this is like my first pull request to Ember. This is what I did earlier today with Deborah. She taught me Angular 2 Forms, which is really cool. And it's a new version of Forms too, right? New version, yep. Yep. And then this is Ember D&D &D Helper. So this is actually creating a drag and drop, I'm pretty sure, uh, in ember that was like really easy and awesome and i'm pretty no, sure I did a drag and drop pull request, uh, nice that's awesome this is me and ben ben taught ben decided he wanted to teach me functional programming at a bar at a bar of course yeah so we did that and it's only nine minutes and 33 seconds long this is me going through ember cli this is how to do nested routes where you basically watch ben mess everything up in Ember and then us having to call somebody in and he's like, this is just really laughable, Tracy. Why don't you, why don't you ask me to pair on things that I know? <laughs> so, wait, hold on. What is Ember D&D &D helper? Well, this is actually using Ember. No, this is, this is the same one. Yeah. So anyways, it's things like that, that I think like are interesting and relevant to people like who knows who, but whatever. Yeah, like it's fun, fun to fun watch people pair. Content. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And then it's us talking. Okay. Yellow Brillo. Oh my god. NG start. NGS. Oh god. Are you serious, Tracy? What the hell? Why? Huh? What? Wait. What? Command start is invalid. Do I have to npm install? Sure. ng start. ng. Oh my god. Well, npm ng start should actually work, right? <laughs> are you are you asking for an alias? What, what's happening? Why isn't it? Doing ng uh, version. ng dash dash version. Oh you know, man. And then, uh, code edit. What? Open all your editing tools. There's your logo. Why aren't you opening, bro? What's up, bro? Why aren't you opening? Wait, why isn't it opening? It's no, I didn't know I opened it. Okay, there it is. Okay, yellow bro, yeah. Uh, oh, that's why. 
Is it like different? No, it's not. We have eleven more packs. Huh? Um, close down and reopen the terminal. Okay. Don't think nothing will take you. Oh, crap. What did I do? Okay. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. Alright, so NG, sir. No angular sea life build.js found. But like these versions are different. Why? Beta 11, beta 2, mobile 4. Oh man, did I help you find an issue? I don't know. I don't yes. know if all people have submitted one or not. Yes. Hey, there is an issue about that. Oh. <laughs> This is magical. Uh, um, go into your package process on, on line 32 and get rid of that carrot. Package on line 32 carrot. Yeah, let's get rid of that. He'll still eat the carrot. So go back to your terminal. We're going to do an rm dash rf. Rm dash. Okay. And then you want to type node underscore module. And then flat. Oh, okay. We'll just split them off. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and just do an npm i. <laughs> we're just going to go out and get everything you get. Oh man, I shouldn't be allowed to use the computer. <laughs> so, so what we need is this little um, ticker down at the bottom of the number of times you have to run npm install during the podcast. Yeah. Four. Well, four. yeah, I try, <laughs> I try to keep, keep it light and interesting, you know, while we do it and all. Hey, this is great. Angular Forms is just like already here. Of course. Yeah, but no, but usually, like in my old one, it's not. Right? Oh, this is a new hotness. Yeah, so like, this is new. This is amazing, right? It's like, because before it wasn't included. Am I right or am I wrong? Um, I don't remember when it was brought in. Yeah, and I felt like I always had to do like npm install at angular slash http at angular slash whatever, and then it seems like all of it is here. No, we, uh, have all, we have them all there. They, now, you may need to supply the providers for each of those, because uh, we're not necessarily setting them up. But they are there already in them. So. I'm talking magic. I'm talking magic. Magic. Now, the magic would be is if NPM and software are done. Yeah, right? This is so good. Hey, what'd you, uh, what'd you do le last night? Well, I, um, NPM installed with broccoli and we recorded it. This <laughs> is on the internet. <laughs> but you know, this is really good that Yolo Brolo is finally going up with the new hotness. So I have to say that I'm pretty excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the things the Webpack does really well is the um, refresh time. Uh, make it, you have your serve running, which means everything from the watch mode. Mm -hmm. and watch your source code, so, uh, read, transpile it, and set up the browser. And the browser is really good about updating quickly. Browser, so the like, the, are you just... Are really quick like oh, so you're just basically saying that like the live reload is faster. I find it to be faster. Mm -hmm. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to say that after everything I've said. Your mileage is okay there. 
Mileage may vary. <laughs> Don't repeat anything I say. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, ballerinas and dolphins? What was up with that Twitter conversation? <laughs> I have no idea. It's the Germans. It was, it was like a random word generator. <laughs> It was, it was Pascal, moms and dads. Like, what? I don't get it. And then Shai came in with uh, grandmas and grandpas or something. Yeah. And, and, then, and then chaos just took over. Chaos, I know. It's the best, and though. And emojis in there. Yeah, this is kind of what I like about, like, the JavaScript community in general. It's funny. It's, I think for the first time in my life, like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe I just don't care. <laughs> so so like it's just you know like we can be fun and have fun and do what we do and you know like I this is like I'm I've done four hours of pairing today and I still have to work like 10 to 12 hours mm -hmm. and it's more exciting to me than probably anything else even all the npm installs and like learning weird shit like carrots and rmrf node modules <laughs> and I shouldn't be allowed to touch a keyboard because I deleted everything. <laughs> no, it's fine. Actually, uh, the majority of what you need to install is the uh, Angular CLI. Oh yeah, that's true. That was that was pretty intense. That was pretty intense. Yeah. So I can't wait to download all of Angular onto my computer. You know, oh, everything's in there. Whatever you need, we got it. I'm excited about that. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good. <sighs> okay, what else? What else is exciting on the internet? Besides Pascal's amazing personality. <laughs> well, like, what's over here? Okay, so these are the tests. So I already know this stuff. New YOLO. Sometimes I actually have to delete the tests that are actually generated for me because they start failing. <laughs> Alright, you want to talk about that? And you want to talk about Pascal? Uh, yeah. Sure. So one of the uh, things he said, um, he tried to put in that I think it should be fun to see, is the ability to, when you generate a component, to specify a flag of dash dash no spec. Oh! You will not get a spec file. Oh my god, that is freaking cool. Well, I actually want to, oh my God, you're amazing, by the way. That's so amazing. But I want, wait, hold on. You should want to test the fail. Wait, hold on, hold on. What, how does Pascal fit into all that? Uh, he, he, he really requested uh, to be able to use that going to. Oh. Um, uh, Y'all are so cute. It's like you gave him a rose, but it was a feature. <laughs> That's so sweet. It's yeah, like... It was all like that. It was all like that for it. Uh, you begged me and begged me for the word for a while. Yeah, he cried a little bit. Yeah. You know what's really funny is, it's kind of like um, me going on Pokemon dates and guys trying to get me to go out with them. I'm like, oh, it was so cute. I was on a date with this guy and he dropped a lure for me. <laughs> How sweet was that? I think that's probably the most thing I, the best thing I do current on the internet is avoid playing Pokemon Go. But it's like so amazing, and people connect, and you know, people that I wouldn't normally connect with, I connect with, which is awesome. Okay, what happened? What happened? Are we done? Are we done? Did it go? Did it go? It was both good. All right, now what? Now what? No, it's like, what is it doing? Oh, uh, it looks like you canceled out of the control fees or something. No, I didn't. Okay. I wouldn't do that. I know better. I oh, guess that was a potion problem. <sighs> Alright, anyways. Um, okay, so can you do that for all the files? Like, because I like to do inline HTML. So, can I even do like, so, so it's ng generate uh, component. Oops. Component and then dash 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 no spec yep. and then dash dash 
No HTML. Uh, it's not no HTML. Uh, it's inline test template. So do dash dash inline dash template. Inline dash template. And that will put all your HTML into the component PS file. Oh my god, like it's going to be like template and then give me little back tickies? Yep. Oh my god, this is so sexy. This is so or, hot. Uh, if you don't like type and dash that, or if you want to do the same thing on that line 5, again, do ng space t. Yeah. Bit of a new line. ng g c. No. No, I love you. I love you. You're telling me amazing things. Yes. And dash it. Oh my god, can you please? Done. Yes. Oh, 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 not all that. Broccoli. Those two lines are equivalent. Hey, stop doing that. I'm, I did, it's, it's my editor. It's my editor that wants I to know. do it. Okay, there, okay. Really? Okay, so ng, gc dash, um, wait, hold on, but I have to do ng generate component. Wait, and then I call it, right? And then name, name of component. Right? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I think the may, may need to come before the offense. Dude, let's test it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, check out. I question my life sometimes. <laughs> Jeez. Look at this. You're fine on the IT, um, happy. Oh, does destroy work now? Um, no, I, I disagree with destroy. What? I love destroy. Okay, let's see what it created. Well, I just had a conversation literally two days ago. That's what Git is for. <laughs> oh my god, broccoli. Don't, don't say those things. Okay, wait, hold on. Oh. oh shit! Yes. Do you like your inline file too? This makes me so happy. Okay. You know, I should probably censor myself on the internet, but I feel like if you look at my Twitter feed, it's all hope has been lost. Okay, so. <laughs> but see, now you have you have a spec file. Oh no, you want uh, dash dash no spec. Dash dash no spec. Wait, Broccoli, why aren't you making it consistent? What about the conventions? How come, wait, da how come it's not dash no spec? How come, uh, how come it's not dash? The dash is for the abbreviation. No spec. And then you need an name for that component. Uh, no. Are you going to have a sad component? Spec. No, I don't like sad components. I like happy components. All right, so no spec. So no, there's probably no stuff Except I see spec everywhere, and I'm like, wait, what? Okay, so ngc dash no CSS. Uh, nope. So no, that would be inline, uh, yeah, or inline file. IS. Okay, so you can, yep, IS. Happy. And I need to also with do dash IT, no and then you can also do dash dash. I don't like that. Oh wait, ng, sorry, ng gc dash is happy with no, no CSS. Why are you telling me all these magical things? Okay, so wait, hold on. This is like so beautiful. Okay, wait, I want more. Okay, so <laughs> it's so funny because like with Ember, it's just like okay, ng generate component. Okay, let's talk about other things. So I'm like, oh my god, this is so cool. Wait, but the other thing is you can't be like, can I be like ng generate dash dash help and then get all the things. I will tell you all the things first. So there's class, component, directory, menu, and interface. But it doesn't tell me that I can do like the, oh, inline style. So dash dash inline style. So options and then, are... And then right underneath is the alias of IS. 
Okay, but like, okay, so this is great. So ng component dash flat, what does flat do? So as it is right now, all of the blueprints are created a folded for each of your pieces there. Oh, got it. And this is like a, this is like a... It would not create, it would not create its own folder. Okay, and then component route. So what is this? So that's a flag that isn't being utilized right now is when we had route generation, which is coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, route generation is disabled with all the changes to the router. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through and we're redoing the way that routes are being generated in a more robust manner rather than just utilizing reg regular expressions to find a way to um, inject code within mm -hmm. the application. We're now loading up the TypeScript uh, abstract syntax tree to be able to determine where the necessary code needs to be output. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. So, um, so wait, why did you say, you said, so this is ngcit, so dash it. So this is basically deleting things is what it's doing. Uh, not deleting. It's, uh, not including. Huh? It's, it's um, transitioning where those things get generated. So inline template is, while it is uh, reducing what's being generated in terms of the file count, you no longer get that .html file. The same logic of what's in that HTML file has just moved into the ES6 um, string. Oh, and then, in, uh, oh, sorry. Inline. So inline style is you're moving the CSS in, inline. I got it. Correct. Okay, and then the dash dash no spec is like no spec. Okay, that totally makes more sense to me. Okay. Um, okay, what else can you tell me about uh, Angular CLI now that we have things dealt with? <laughs> What other exciting things happened? So, so no routing yet. Oh, model. What was this model thing you were telling me earlier today? All right. So you were looking for the concept from the Ember CLI of generating the model, which yes. is essentially a class. Mm -hmm. right? Well, I don't know if it's a class, but it's a file. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you're basically creating something that is a model of how you model your data. Uh-huh. Uh, so you can do the same thing, except in is it Angular land it's a uh, class that you want to generate. So you can use NGG to generate and that you generate. And then class, which is abbreviated C L, so C is taken by component. And then you type in the name of the class. So we'll call it like uh happy model. Okay. Uh you just call it happy. Okay. And that will generate a file so then don't hit enter yet. So that would just create a file called happy.cs and happy.spec.cs. But what you could also do... Where is it going to stick it, though? As of right now, it'll just put it in the app directory. Okay, got it. Uh, what you could do is tell it what type of file it is. So hit space. Uh -huh. And you could type model. And that will then make it happy.model.cs. So you'll notice the components that get generated are... Uh, the component name dot component dot cs. So, so could I give you a to specify what type of file or what type of class you're generating? Huh. So if you want to do a data class, you can do ngcl um, important base data or whatever. Data? Uh, not no, not bang data. Um, important like the word important. I don't know. If I was trying to come <laughs> up with a noun. Oh, got it. <laughs> And so then data, because it's a data file. Data. Yes. So I'm calling a file important. Yeah. All right. So, and then if I, if I want to do like ngg uh, cl dash dash no spec data. Uh, no spec is only there for components, not for. Uh, okay, got it. Okay, cool. Because we like tests. We like all our tests. Okay. What else? What else? So that's for... So what are all the things that you can do with that? Is it listed over here? With class? Uh, just like, like you can do a model, you can do data. Oh, I guess this is just like the dot, right? Is that what it is? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Okay. So it's, a little, it's a way of being a little bit more descriptive about what the file is. And if you were to open that particular file, the word data doesn't exist anywhere inside the class. It's just a 
grouping, naming, convention, so that you know what you imp you're importing. So if you were to have a happy component and a happy model, um, you're not just importing something called happy, you'd be importing from happy.model, which is a little bit more. So basically what you're saying is like your, your way of like, let's say generating a ton of models for your app, right? Mm -hmm. You, would you put it in the component or would you do everything sort of in the app directory and then just have like happy dot model, like people dot model, like dog dot model, et cetera. Now you'd want to move it as far down the component tree as necessary. Mm -hmm. And if you need it, further up the chain, then you would promote it up. Okay, cool. I just was wondering what your convention was. Okay. So All right. Mm -hmm. There's a shared directory that gets generated by default out of the app. Yeah. Where? Is the app shared and make an index file mess. I would put it um, inside the shared directory for the particular component. The sh uh, like, you mean this? You'd put it in here? Yeah, I would probably put it in a folder called shared underneath happy component. Oh, I see. You, you'd or, be or easily be like... happy component, depending upon what the convention is you want to use in your I see. Okay. Okay, tell me, more, tell me more about what Angular CLI can do. So, the paths of what you want to generate. So, if you want to generate a class in, for inside the happy component, so you have a folder called happy component, I believe. Yes, NGGCL, uh huh, happy component. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so type happy dash component. Okay. Because that directory. And then, oops, no, do slash. Ooh, nested. And yeah, so you can tell it where you want to put it. So you, you're telling it that you want to put it inside the happy component directory. And you want to call it happy and you want to call it model. So you'll notice that that creates it underneath the happy component folder. It's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. Yeah. So if you're in the root of your project or if you're just in the source directory, it'll create it based off of app down. So you notice you didn't need to include the app folder name even though you're just in the source directory. I, I didn't have to. Oh, no. I... Yes. Wait, what? But if you were to be down inside of the happy component directory, you can just type uh, ngcl happy. That makes generate the model okay. inside that folder. It's relative to where you, your current working directory is. Oh my god, so hot, so sexy. So if you're, you're going to be generating a bunch of things in a uh, particular folder, then it makes sense to take your command uh, down into that directory. This way you have less typing for the relative test. Oh my god, tell me more, tell me more. What else? Um, all the stuff that was there is still there. So you can still build. Your application to serve it and test it. Ng dash build. Build. Ng build. Oh no, no dash. It's ng build. Ng build. Okay, and then ng test. Can you do the thing? Oh, like run ng. Huh? Run ng build. Okay, ng build. All right, fine. Fine, broccoli. So. Fine. Build it. <laughs> so. The, one of the complaints that um, a lot of people have been spitting out um, online, whether it's through issues on GitHub, Stack Overflow, or on Twitter, is uh, concerns about production builds. How does it make you feel? Let's talk about your emotions. There may be a few tears there. <laughs> um, That's why you have ice cream. <laughs> yeah, they, they take all the tears away. What tears? <laughs> What's an emotional tissue? Ah, okay. <laughs> emotional so, ice cream is my so emotional tissue you can do. okay got it yeah let's do an ng build and then put dash dash prod at the end wait what did ng build do anyways like why do i even care <laughs> so took your application and build it into the disk directory okay and that excites me why nobody's why? listening because you can actually deploy what's in the disk directory oh can't you just do ng serve and then just deploy it to GitHub or something? No? You could, but wouldn't you want to bundle things up uh, and get rid of code, uh, unused code? Oh my god! That? Broccoli, tell me you're not serious. Why would I tell you I'm not serious when I am serious? Oh my god, wait, hold on, hold on. You're teaching me That's something very new right now. 
Holy shit. So NG Bill does tree shaking. Yeah. Oh my God. Why have I not been shaking my tree? I don't know. I need to shake more trees. You need to get angry at your tree. I'm pretty excited about this tree shaking. I'm also really excited about tacos, but I'm not going out to eat right now. Okay, so NG, NG build. So every time before you deploy to GitHub, you always do NG build. So there is an add-on, and I'm not sure uh, how valid it still is, uh -huh. um, to be able to run NG deploy. Um, that's definitely going to be revisited uh, relatively soon. Um, other deployments. Option. Yeah. Okay. Wait. So, uh, and do I do so when I do I do ng build? What's the difference between ng build and ng build dash dash prod? Like, okay, so it's ready for production. Is that what it is? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, why would I ever run ng build and not ng build dash dash prod? If you're just running locally, if you uh, maybe want to run different observer, if you don't want everything fully minified, I think it's minified. So, no, it does not. So it'll do your uh, uglification. Um, if you do the prod. The prod okay, so basic. Oh, okay, so production means you're uglifying things. Yes. Okay. And I there's some other things that are in there. I haven't dug into it. I did not uh, partake in a lot of the webpack transition. I haven't been making things very ugly lately. Well, that's okay, because there were issues with that. Uh, with the well, I don't even do it with, like, Ember. I mean, I'm sure because Ember does it. Like Ember, you know, Ember build dash dash prod or Ember build or whatever probably tree shakes for me, and I like never do that. So um, I, I don't know what's there because um, the build pipeline that we're using is different. It's much different. Oh, so hot. Because we, we, we're also you uh, the dash dash script by default in that Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tell me more. Okay. What else? So you can do that. Okay. Now what? What else? Um, and you serve work. So you can serve up your application. Of course. Got to go to local host right here. Yeah, Wait, why is it building so much? Uh, I don't know. YOLO BROLO. YOLO BROLO. All right. Now what? What else? Uh, go ahead and make a change in your application. So. Oh, no. You want to leave anything? Well, I know it does live, live reload for sure. So. Like, okay, so we, we can go into uh, index. Wait, no. Where's my app component? Uh, there app it component. is. Here there it is. TS. Well, I guess I can just do it in here. Oh, wait, this doesn't even like. Why? Oh, it doesn't like me because it's probably like this one. Okay, there we go. Okay, done. Yeah, there's probably another thing pop up that said, hey, that tag doesn't exist. That's why I thought it was a uh, component. Bastards. All right, now what? What else? You now installed the new webpack version of the Angular CLI. Dude, that's awesome. All right. Oh, so uh, how, how's your guys' testing, though? Like, are you asking about me and the application that I work? How well do I test? No, like, I just talk, like... I don't want to talk about that. No, just like, with Ember CLI, you can do all these, like, testing and, like, running through different browsers and testing in different browsers and things like that. So, it's all done through a Karma configuration, and that is all... I think it's set up each Chrome by default. Yeah, but, like, you can... I, if, but, like, can you be, like whatever, ng test, and then like be like Chrome, Mas Firefox, this, that, whatever, and then it just opens them all for you and then compares them, compares your tests? Yeah, you make me remember one of the pull requests I added. Uh, I think there's a dash dash browser on test. Um, it, on ng test, you can specify which browser you want to run. Browser. But in order, in order to do that, though, you're going to need the Carmel Launcher for those particular browsers. What does that even mean? So in order for Karma to control and run a browser, it needs a uh, launcher to be able to launch that browser, or how it needs to launch it, and whatever it needs. What is that? It's an NPM package that you need to configure. Oh, shit. Perhaps you are missing some plugin. Do you guys write these things? Mm. Nope, that's all part of Karma. Oh, so I'm missing a, like, well, 
All right, you it'll know what? By default, by default it'll, run, it'll just run Chrome. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, cool. Thank you so much, Broccoli, for teaching me all this. I'm really excited. I mean, I that was a lot. Wait, what? I found more. Oh, you do? I want more. All right, uh, what's your CSS preprocessor of choice? CSS preprocessor. Sass. Sass. Cool. Oh my god, hotness. Um, I'm ready. Hotness. Do you want to use that? Yes, yes. All right. Go back to Adam. Okay. Actually, uh, before you do, run ng serve. Get that run. Oh, I, it's already serving. It's in the background. Oh, wait, oh, no. Okay. Wait, no, it's not. Hold on. What the hell? I ran ng test. Then, uh, Hold on. Ng serve. Oh, foreground. Oh, yeah, so it's running. Okay. Um, okay, Adam, open up Adam. Okay. Sass, Sass, Sass. Okay, so go to your app component.tf. Okay. Wait, TS. Yeah. So, yeah, say that. On line six. Yeah. You're referencing a CFS file. Perfect. Boom. That file doesn't exist. Wait, what? That oh. file doesn't exist, so we need to go and rename the actual file. Oh man, I got really excited. <clears throat> it was like I caught like a really strong Pokemon, you know. <laughs> oh, so it's that easy. Like literally, SAS yeah. is already built in. Yep. So the now if you want to create a variable in there, um, dollar color. Uh, yep. And then you could say on another line, say H1 color. Equal or color colon. No, uh, oh god, you're like, oh god. Okay. <laughs> we use curly braces. Can I type through the internet on the internet? Yeah, do it, do it. Uh, do that? Yeah, do, are you, hello? Really? Uh, doesn't that just feel so much better? You feel like you have control of your life. I didn't have to type with my mouth. This is great. <laughs> I love introducing people to Screen Hero. <laughs> there we go. So Boom. We Over here. Well, I mean, we have to like add a class somewhere, right? Don't we? This should be an H1 tag. So, are you feeling pretty good about like? Using a screen hair right now? I am. It's great. <laughs> Color is wrong? red. What did I do? Wrong. Oh, saved it. Silly. Ah. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Boom! Feel like you know feel what? like I troubleshooted you know right there. What? I I I I've been I'm a big fan. I've been using the episode a lot and I leave auto save turned on. Oh. So I haven't saved the file in a long time because I was a plumber. Oh. Are, are you plugging VS Code right now? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. that's super cool. Okay, so now you can use SAS too. This is amazing. This is great. Yeah. Um, you want to bring in Material? Yes! I do! Wait, Angular Material 2 or Angular Material? Angular Material 2. What else would you do? Seriously? Yeah. I'm kind of scared to do that though. Do it. We're doing it. YOLO. YOLO BROLO. Absolutely. I mean, it's the right project, right? Do it. Do it. Oh, uh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm jumping back in here. Get in there. I don't know the name of the. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Where is You know the block code, you're supposed to tell me about the first video and on it. Oh yeah, that's true. But I I thought you were like doing it in some like crazy different way or something. Like this. Oh no, you can just read my blog post. It's much easier, let me tell you. Okay, you do that. Okay, I'll just read my blog post. Hold on, let's find it. Oh wait. NG displaying data. Webpack, material to CSS, material to this one. All right, so here, all that jazz. 
I'm about jump. Well, we can just do a button. But, like, this is the problem, right? That There needs to be some bundling. And I know that um, Hans and Jeremy have been chatting about it. Okay. What? Toggle. button? Um, I don't know. We're good. We'll just do it. Alright. I'm gonna do add Angular 2. Add that material. But I know you need core. And okay. add Angular. Angular 2 material. material. You can do card. Do card. Wait, oh, hold on. Why? Are, it's material. You did material. Material. Okay. Wait, no, you spelled it wrong. I did? I'm on, I never typed it wrong. <laughs> I, there's an I. I know. I, A, L. That's it? Yeah, I felt like I was a cheerleader just now. Thanks. <laughs> Broccoli, I can't tell you how amazingly excited Angular makes me. Like, and pairing with you, and pairing with like. You need to do more. Uh, framework agnostic though. I know, but I think it's just because there's so much new stuff, right? Like with Ember, you just have very like vertical growth, right? So I mean, even with Angular two, I think it was two dot two dot three that I was playing with the other day. Um, there's some new new things that have been introduced to it um, that are actually rather intriguing that are really exciting to me, but. You guys, like, for beginner, like, for the beginner stuff, like, you guys have just, like, easier hits for me to get really excited. Um, but I, I think there's something you need to provide for. Mm -hmm. to find out what I think it's just button directives and the underscore button directives. We can check. We can check my blog post. Where is it? The yeah. yeah. underscore button. Dot, oh, see? This is why I wrote that blog post. <laughs> Thank you, Internet. Yes, Internet. I love you, Internet. I don't want to provide it. Oh, no, not provided. The directives. The directives. Yeah. As the name tells it. Oh, shit. Sure. And then we're going to use that. Save it. Save your file. Save your file. Ah. Oh, man, I'm good at this pairing. Wait, you didn't save it. <laughs> Oops. That's awesome. Wait, that's not saved. Okay. I will get back to it. <laughs> wait, hold on. No. Oh, <laughs> wait. All right, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I'm not right. touching it. <laughs> so now we want to do button. Uh, I think it's green. Okay. 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 And then do button. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Save. Save the file. You're you're the saver. All right, hold on. You got you got to let me let me get back. Let me get back to Save it. Saved it. Saved it. Saved right, it. Bye. Oh, no. Because usually you have to do a ton of crap with material. So you imported it. You... Do we need to... Uh, any, are there any providers to use material? Wait. Why don't... Wait. I thought you added a directive. I see. I don't Maybe. see it. Maybe I deleted it. I was like, no, you can't have your directive. Oh my god, I feel like I'm an angel developer. Oh yeah, 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 that. Oh my god, oh my god, magic, 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 Ma magic. I don't know, I see errors on the console. That's it. This is crap. Wait, why? Oh, uh, go back. Uh, Angular 2 back material. Online 2.
Oh my goodness. Uh, I think you can do primary as an attribute on the schema. Yeah, for the color. Did it just say color primary or is it just primary? I think it, is, it may be color primary. Yeah, so do you do like color color equals primary in quotes? Yeah. Probably. All right, cool. We got it. Got it. Sexy. It's awesome. Material works. So no other magic, just NPM installing and knowing what to import and then specifying your addresses and using the right um, attributes on your public. Oh. On your, uh, Broccoli, you know, this means I have to go and write another blog post. Because look, see, I don't have to, so I do have to do directive still, yep. but I don't have to, so I can do the, this is fine, but I don't have to do the system config file. Nothing. And I don't have to do the, well, I said to import. It'd be nice if I didn't have to do all this import directive crap. Um, yeah, so that's I don't need to look at my package. What are the I don't need to look at my package JSON. Nope, because uh, the NPM install when we did that, we did the dash dash date. So that automatically updates the text about JSON for you. Okay, and then that thing, the forms, I probably still need to do. Right? Yep, I definitely just updated my application that I worked on for my full time job. Um, to the latest version of forms today. And then what about this thing, the system config? I still need to do that. Nope. You, well, you can try to update that file, but that file does not exist. Oh, my God. Hallelujah! Material okay. 2 is still a pain in the ass, which I love. Like, I love it so much, but, like, it's hard. I, I just need to spend, like, eight hours hacking away at it and get, like, really, really, really comfortable with it. If you think, I mean, it's all on top of it, it's similar. Um, to bootstrap. So a lot of people use bootstrap in their application. Uh -huh. You have to get familiar with what classes you need to add to your markup uh, in order to file things uh, like you want. Um, same thing with material. It's a learning curve to be able to know what attributes, what um, values you need to specify on your markup to make it look like you want it to. Be. This is great. Okay, so what else can you do? Are you done? Are you? Have you given me everything in your brain? Um, yeah, that's everything. There's nothing else to do. We've done everything I'm doing here as possible. Really? No, I've done it with that. It's on that way. It's mainly showing up so many different libraries and what have you. Um, if you wanted to do something other than the tier of the um, you could take uh, a few things out there working on Angular 2 directives. Um, to be able to see, use the different bootstrap components within there, whatever, see they type ahead, their button, their accordion, their different control sets, uh, to be able to pull those and have those executed in an Angular 2 fashion versus um, bootstrap jQuery people. I don't even know what bootstrap is because Ember CLI does it for me and I have no idea. Uh, bootstrap or what used to be Twitter bootstrap, uh, the open source. Um, oh, um, Bootstrap. I thought you were talking about like Bootstrap, Angular Bootstrap. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> no, the Bootstrap is CFS framework. I think it'd be kind of sad if I didn't know what Bootstrap was. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. You've been to Twitter.com. You've seen you, you that file. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I really appreciate you, and this was amazing, and thank you so much, and I love the internet, okay. and I'm so glad that you exist in this life. But you talk to Ben a lot, and he's going to push you to do a lot of things with observable, and that's a good thing. Yeah, well, actually, I bought a domain name, and it's rxallthethings.com. Nice. So at some point in time, I'm going to need a picture. I just talk with uh, Monster with uh, Donto. Uh, uh, I don't think so. I think he was saying, like, don't rx all the things. No. Yeah, he says don't use our, don't use observables all the time. Oh, he does say that, but I'm, I, I thought that was the name of his talk. I don't remember what. What's the um? Hey, I didn't get to tattoo your face. <laughs> but you know what's exciting? 
there's this um, the tattoo thing. Now, Deborah has added a form that you can submit. Well, actually, it's not hooked up to any back end, which, you know, that's another hour of my time at some point in time this week. But, like, there needs to be a back end anyways because then people can, like, ask for tattoos. Ooh, to request to have, uh, like, a tattoo so put on. Yeah, and then they can submit their pictures. And then, like yeah, so, like, basically it's going to be, like, a community site of tattoos. That's awesome. Although, honestly, I don't know if people want to tattoo their faces. I think I got, I got one on my arm. <sighs> when I was out there. So depressing. I know, right? So depressing. Okay, Broccoli, we can follow you on the internet, right? Do you want to say? Absolutely, find me at Broccoli um, on GitHub or on Twitter. Broccoli eats ice cream. Look at you, wearing a broccoli shirt. Actually, if you scroll down, you'll see me tweeting about the uh, Webpack uh, release to GitHub. This is kind of today. funny. Totes just did this. Totes just did this with broccoli. Wait, what? This one? This one? Yeah, that one. That one right there. Okay, I'll just retweet it. Alright. Oh, look at this. This is so cute. Oh, God. I'm so angular. I'm so angular. I'm just going to give in. Broccoli, did you see that website I made? What's this oh. website called? Um, it's called Router Demo. Oh, God. I did see that. Is that the one that I was on? Yes. Did you enjoy uh, it? Routable. You are routable. You, you, it was so funny. I did a demo of the router of just like how to set it up really easily, right? And then like Manfred gets on stage and is like, let me talk for half an hour about the router and go so deep. And like it was the most amazing experience because I was like, oh my God, I don't know what a router is anymore. Because Manfred does, and I do not. <laughs> I, I, I learned a little bit about the routers the other day. Um, so I was trying to configure and set up my router. Um, but I, so I like to do all my providing for my application at the app fluid component level. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Not at the bootstrap level, but the router kind of needs to know up front mm -hmm. um, what route you have before you can take control to be able to utilize a redirect to a default route. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why it wasn't working, but I got executed and I now provide my route at the bootstrap level. Cool. That's awesome. I uh, learned I learned about the router from Pascal, so whatever he taught me is right. Whatever Pascal teaches is like too. I love Pascal. I was like, yeah, Pascal, I totally get what you're saying. He's like, Tracy, no, you don't. It's okay to tell me that you don't. I was like, okay, Pascal, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I have my tab if you want to think Oh, uh, creating custom form control. What was that? What was that? What's Is that? that an article that he recently posted that I need to read, that I have yet to read? And if he's listening to this, uh, by the time he's listening to this, I'll hopefully have read it. He's not listening. Nobody's <laughs> listening. This is Yellow Brother. Yeah, but this may be like two years down the road. Two years down the road, Pascal's going to be like, you t oh my god, I'm committing homicide. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so it's 10.30. I should let you go. But I really appreciate all this help. And um, if there's anything I can do for you, obviously, I want to do it for you. So you know I'm at your beck and call. Awesome. Yes. And, uh, you I know, the talk as well. Yeah. Everybody on all the TLR. Well, I think it's going to go so much better because, well, now I just need to, like, process everything from Ember CLI and Angular CLI and figure out what the hell this talk is going to be about, you know, next week. Promote both. <laughs> well, I'm obviously promoting both, but like, but like, I'm thinking because 
I mean, I might just do a simple app like this. You know, I know people are like, oh, don't do those simple apps. But honestly, like, with a route and with components and with, like, installing material, I don't know. I have to think about it. You know. We'll see. We'll uh -huh. see. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.